everybody, my name is Professor Sabrina Isaac Mowry. Welcome to another lecture on physics. Now today, we're going to be looking at how rotational motion is basically analogous to SHM. So, let's say you have a ball attached to a rope, and some weird guy is spinning it for you. Now, if you're, oh, sorry for uh, that distraction, but Let's say that he's rotating the ball for you. From a bird's eye view, it would look like it was moving in both the X and Y direction at any time. It would look like it was uh, moving in both the X and Y direction at any time. However, well, when you look at it from a perspective where you're at the edge of the table, Everything is just cut off because since you, yeah, all your motion, all the motion you see is cut down to single dimensional movement because uh, your point uh, view is not in the air, a point in the air. You can only see. Uh, it going in simple harmonic motion or moving this way and that way. So, that's a very nice way of analyzing rota a simple harmonic motion. But wait, the lecture doesn't end there. We are just getting started. Anyways, shut up with that. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot. I almost forgot your name. Albert. Hi, Albert. <laughs> I, I haven't seen you for so long. Hi, student. I I think you were the wife of Mr. Rodriguez. I don't remember. <laughs> Anyways. Dad, I'm involved. <laughs> oh, God. Now that's all that I care about. That, that's in, that's Percival's face. Uh, ignore what you just saw, guys. Anyways, we're going to be... <laughs> this is just even more embarrassing. We're digging our rabbit hole with our own. Anyways. Anyways, uh, now, let's see how this works. Well, when you're in rotational motion, this is uh, what it would look like from a bird's eye view. Let's say it's in the middle of a uh, cycle. So... Let's say that this is what it looks like, and it's in the middle of a cycle right now. The radius would be technically the amplitude you're seeing from here, or A. Then, uh, this is the amplitude, uh, because this is its range, like how much it's stretching. Then, you have this kind of x, where it's uh, this kind of, like, how do I say it? And then you have this line. This is x. x is sort of uh, like half of a, I guess. And then you have this, which we can't really describe other than a squared minus x squared. So, now, here... Let's say it's moving counterclockwise. Then we know it's going to have a tangential velocity. Thus, we can take the uh, we can take this at perpendicular. Oh yeah, and we have the x component of it too. So, uh, I believe these two must be similar since one line is perpendicular to the other. So leave these things must be similar plus the right angles map onto each other so that's something so uh they are pretty much similar because you can see that uh, these lines are clearly parallel to each other if you uh, just rotate them a bit because you can see every angle is 90 degrees to their counterpart this is 90 degrees to its counterpart, and uh, this guy 
is a, a sort of 90 degrees to his counterpart. So, you can see that this must be theta if this is theta 2. So now, this is Vmax or all his total velocities, the x component combined with this missing y component. Thus, we know that there must be some sort of special relation between there must be some sort of special relation between uh, v max and v x and a uh, x and maybe a root a squared minus x squared. So if you do that, I think it would, yeah, yeah. So that gives you a over. This. Uh, so now we get equals to I believe. V max over Vx. Meaning that we get this weird looking mess. So that means that V max is equal to A Vx over square root of A squared minus X squared. But that's not just V max. V max is so many more goddamn things. So, you know the classical equation V equals B over T, right? You know that equation, right? Yes. I hope you do. Anyways, uh, that gets you. So, if you convert that to angular terms, when you're looking at a circle, rotating in a circle, the circumference is 2 pi r. So, D gets to become 2 pi r, or in this case, our amplitude is r, divided by t, which is period. Now, uh, that's all we have to do just to just get our normal velocity, max. So, now we know that's it, and now that we know that's a thing, we get the equation t is equal to 2 uh, pi a over v max. So I think uh, what we learned yesterday had a relation between a for amplitude. Uh, it had a relation between amplitude and uh, I believe only the to how stretched it was and just the position. To the amplitude and the velocity had a relation. So. You also needed to find the sp uh, spring constant and the uh, mass, but those are usually handed to you beforehand. You can find them easily if you don't know them because of this weird looking guy. Anyways, um, this is equal to m over k, root m over k. So t is equal to 2 pi square root of m over k. That means, uh, since f is 1 over t, f would be 1 over 2 pi square root of k over m. Proof of that is 2 pi square root of m over square root of k. You're taking the inverse of that. So the inverse of 2 pi is 1 over 2 pi. And the inverse of this is square root of k over square root of m. Or in other words, the square root of k over m. So, that reorganizes into this, which is our new equation for frequency. So now we know an equation for frequency that we can conveniently use when we don't know much about, you know, velocity or lambda or anything like that. Anyways, now let's look at a specific problem before we leave it off for today. Let's say we have a spider. I know many of you have arachnophobia, arachnophobia and I sort of do too. So I'm just going to draw a cute one. So this is our tiny little spider. Let's say he's 0.3 grams. In this case, 0 0.0003 kilograms. And he's in his web waiting to catch a fly. So, 
He's in his web and he wants to catch a fly. How does he do that? Well, what uh, he does is he waits. So he's waiting in his web and his flight movement makes 0.15 hertz. I think it uh, makes the spring vibrate with 15 hertz. Find what the frequency is off of the, based off of those. Well, we can make basic predictions uh, from this because if we just uh, solve for k here, we can uh, easily find what k is. Let's square both sides first. That leaves us with f squared is equal to 1 over 4 pi squared times k over m. Now, that becomes f squared is equal to k over 4 pi squared m. If you do cross multiplication, that gives you k is equal to f squared 4 pi squared m, which is equal to, if we plug in all the values, 225 times 4 pi squared times the mass is t 3 times 10 to the negative fourth power. I believe that's what everything should look like, if I'm correct. Yep, everything looks like it's fine. So, now, uh, let's see what happens here. If you round this all out, it turns to be around 2.66. Now, let's say you uh, he lands a tiny 0.10 insect in there. Then you'll have to change the, uh, this value to 4. Let's cut off all the other part and you'll have to change this value to 4. So, uh, now the, this is going to be 4. That gets you to 3.53 if you plug in the numbers. Now, we have learned how to solve how rotational motion is analogous to SHM, how to find frequency in case you uh, don't uh, in case you don't know anything about the period that you can't find. And now, thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you next time.